but yeah, that was one experience, and he's helped me. My health has shifted from seeing him, and I got a wonderful job right after seeing him. So. Talk about the health, because that's a lot of people who are listening, I do a lot of research on healers and healing phenomenon. A lot of the listeners tune into my radio show because they are interested in healing. So can you address that? Um, well, I don't know how it works. Um, I just know that um, when I came to see him, I didn't. the first time I saw him was in San Diego, and I was pretty sick. I had been sick on and off for months, and I didn't even know if I was going to be able to drive down to see him. And um, I did make it down, and after three gazing sessions, my energy was back. I was feeling incredible, and that was quickly. Um, the initial issue I went for, though, I'm still having issues with a year later. So <laughs> you never know how, it's, how the energy is going to work or how it's going to work for you in particular. Does that ever make you feel skeptical or wonder if this um, is valid or not? You no, know, because so many other things have happened, you know. So I, I don't doubt it. It's just like, okay, my process is different on this thing, you know. It's, it's not releasing as quickly as I'd like it to. The proof of what Bratha had to offer to you is not in that you have perfection. Or in, in no, no, no. Why not? I have perfection, but um, no, I mean, I, I can see the shifts, and sometimes they're subtle. Sometimes I look back and go, oh, you know, something's happened over these last two months that I didn't notice right away, and um, something lifted, something's shifted, and so, and I've seen that with friends of mine, too, when they've come, and, and they... Any friends? stories of theirs? Uh, well, I have one girlfriend, and she wanted to gaze for a relationship. And the thing I noticed about her is a couple months later, she said to me, you know, I'm okay being alone. I don't need a relationship. And she never spoken like that. She always felt like less than because she wasn't in a relationship, and that totally lifted from her. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's a huge healing right there and then, you know. So we don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but... Um, Walking in the comfort of your own peaceful... Apps. That's eased for some people. And then your career, what was that? What was the shift there? Uh, well, I was pretty stuck. I was um, an outside consultant and I felt pretty stuck. I didn't like working by myself anymore and I didn't know where, what I was going to do. But um, about a month after I went to Vegas to gaze with Brasso for a weekend, I got a phone call from a major company that said, We have a VP position you think you'd be perfect for. Would you be interested? And I said, Well, sure, I'll come in and talk to you about it. And I took the job and I've been loving it. So, wow. out of the blue? Out of the blue? Yeah, pretty much. Um, one person was moved out of that position and to another position, and I was like the perfect person for it. So, I got it. Oh, that's <laughs> fantastic. So, you have been to San Diego, Las Vegas, and now you're today in Woodland Hills, California. Other places as well? Uh, Phoenix and San Francisco. This is, this is a real path for you then to you know, take this like experience. A, I feel like it's such a blessing to be able to you know, have access to this kind of energy that I do take advantage of it when I can. So my experience of the energy is different each time I've, I've gazed you know, and you marinate and such. So today, just for example, I just felt this nice warmth that came in certain regions that uh, is a different type of warmth than just when you're cozy or when you're in front of a fire. So, so I'm saying all this to kind of ignite your own experience of what your sensation or your resonance with the energy is. How would you describe it? You know, it's different at different times. I know yesterday when I was live streaming, I felt this warmth all over my back. And um, other times I felt, actually felt sick. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily always... What type of sickness? Um, chest pain. You know, I've had ache, weird aches and pains come up during the gazing. Um, and... Uh, a little lightheaded, that kind of thing. Fascinating process. Well, thank you, Cindy, for sharing your story. Thank you very much. And see if there's anybody else I can go. Anybody else want to tell a story? You want to tell a story? My name is Christine Rungay. How did you become part of the Bratso uh, experience? And what's the, the, the process for you? Um, I heard about this healer that had come into town for the first time. Uh, a couple years ago, and so I just went to get the experience and get an idea of what it was about, and I felt the energy right away. It just felt like it opened my heart, and I felt so much peace and so much joy. So then I volunteered my services, and the second time it came to the Beverly Garland, then I became part of the experience. And I, I don't see we, you know, have bells and whistles, but what I have is just a changing of perception. It's a deeper understanding at a different level, 
and a lot of peace, a lot of awareness. I could feel the energy flowing in my life. Things happen spontaneously. Um, last thing that just happened spontaneously, I woke up one morning and I had no desire for sugar. And that's a big one for me because I like sweet. Sweet had a sweet tooth and it's been two and a half months and nothing. I have no desire, no interest in it at all. And so I've lost weight just naturally. How so um, I haven't even been on, but I put my pants on this morning. <laughs> they fell down. Oh. <laughs> so wow. I to get the next size because I haven't got on the scale. But I just take it, you know, as, as, as when I wake up and see what the next thing will unfold. And I've been here to watch all the experiences from Michelle to Chris that are on the DVDs. And I saw them how they came in and what shape they were in. And I saw them when they left. It is so, so expiring and invigorating and empowering just to watch what happens for everybody because we're all the same and it happens for us at the right time. So can you tell some of those stories when you watch them come in? Can you tell those two stories? I remember when Michelle came in and she was really frail and real um, fragile and they brought her in the wheelchair and we kept her inside the room and she stayed in the room for three whole days and brought us here for three days. <laughs> And after the third time, she says, I have hope. She says, I have hope. And we just kept her in the room the whole time, would take care of whatever she needed to. And then that same day, she says, I know I got my healing. I always knew it would be a spiritual healing. And so she sat there the rest of the time, very quiet, and went home. And then we heard that she got, you know, an X-ray and that the, her tumor had um, shrunk to the size of a pea. As opposed to what? to the size of a golf ball, and she'd had 36 surgeries, and John Donnelly, her friend that brought her here, we saw, I've seen him again and again, he said, she is doing so wonderful, she is doing so well. And then Chris was this um, gentleman that had a lot of um, health problems, and was, uh, forgot his wheelchair, forgot his walker, and it literally took him 20 minutes to walk to the front of the room. Um, when we first let him in, and uh, we watched him walk. He was struggling. He was having a hard time breathing, and he sat there one session only. He came with his wife, and after that one session, he got up, marched out of the room, marched up the flight of stairs, and we were just like dumbfounded. I watched this. And his wife goes, he's passed me. He's never, ever done that. He hasn't done that in 15 years, and he said, all I need is one session. That was it. I got what I needed, and it, it was truly amazing. You've you seen know. him since? No, I haven't seen him since. Oh, what an interesting story. So we're going to come and meet you again in the future when we find out about your sugar and your weight and, <laughs> and how fast you're cooking. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Yes. And your first name is? Tina. Tina. And what has been your experience with Brazos so far? Well, last year I, w I had a phone call from my brother in Holland uh, who uh, his girlfriend and him had a child who was my nephew. And during an um, an awful accident with a ship, I'm born and raised on a ship in Europe, a cargo ship, and uh, the, the ship had flipped over 180 degrees and he lost his only child in that accident. That was nine years ago. The mom got really sick afterwards and got very, very depressed. Now last year, they went separate, wa separated, uh, they could not stay longer together, or every, uh, him and her went their own ways, but they stayed friends. My brother called me and said, you know that Madi, that's her name, is very, very sick, and she's in the hospital, and uh, I want you to come over. Now, this was in Holland, and I live in the United States. So I went to, to Holland because she's dying. I could not believe what I was heard. All the time they thought it was depression, but it happened to be... Her heart was working only with 12 to 15 percent capacity. When I came there, they had given up on her already. She was only 46. She was in an, um, she was by this time in a kind of a hospice, hospice-like uh, uh, yeah arrangement, and um, her feet were already dying off because her blood was not pumping around no more, and she had blood clots everywhere. The cardiologist said he only had two, in his whole career, only seen two patients with so many, one was her, with so many blood clots. She needed a new liver, new lungs, and a new, um, new uh, liver, lungs, and heart to survive. 